So next page, number 15, uh, lesson number seven, the gospel. Next page, number 14, lesson number seven, the gospel. All right, number one, the gospel is the most important part of the presentation. The gospel is what brings salvation. If there's any time you want to be thorough, it's here. But you should be thorough. You should try to be thorough the entire time. Letter A. At this point, we have showed the person that, the, that we are all sinners. That's your fill-in, all. At this point, we have showed the person that we are all sinners. Letter B. That our sin has a payment, which is the second death or hell. Letter C. That salvation is the gift of eternal life. Salvation is the gift of eternal life. And as a gift, it is free. We cannot earn it or work for it. Letter D. Now we'll show them how the gift was purchased for us. Now we'll show them how the gift was purchased for us. So number two, let's talk about the gospel. What is the gospel? A, what the word gospel means. So you're filling as gospel. What the word gospel means. Isaiah 61.1 says this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now, Jesus read that passage, and it's quoted in the New Testament in Luke 4.18, but when Jesus read it, he quoted it this way, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. So, in Isaiah it says good tidings, in Luke it changes the word good tidings to the gospel to the poor, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. So, what we can learn from that is these words are used interchangeably. So, the gospel means good tidings. That's what the word literally means. Good tidings or good news. The gospel equals good tidings. It's the good news. And the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the good news. I mean, the fact that God became flesh and he died on the cross for our sins so that we wouldn't have to pay for our own sins is the best news you could ever hear. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 tells us this, you know, the, the word means the good news, but what is the gospel? Here's what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So Paul said, I'm going to declare to you the gospel, which I preached unto you. What did he preach to them? The gospel. Which also ye have received. What did they receive? The gospel. And wherein ye stand. What do they stand on? The gospel. Verse 2. By which also ye are saved. How did they get saved? By the gospel. If ye keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. The only way that the gospel cannot save someone is if they believed in vain or if they didn't actually believe it was empty verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all also uh, first of all that which I also received how that number one Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures number two and that he was buried and that number three he rose again the third day according to the, the scriptures. So the Apostle Paul said, I'm going to declare the gospel to you. And then here's what he declared, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. One, two, and three. One is the death, two is burial, three, uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what is the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Letter C. The gospel is how our salvation was purchased. The gospel is how our salvation was purchased. Acts 20, 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. All right? Galatians 3, 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The word redeemed means to buy back, to purchase by payment of ransom. So how were we purchased? How were we redeemed? How were we saved? By the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, by his blood being shed on the cross. Revelation 5, 9 says this, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou, hast, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So how this conversation may go, number three, how you can explain the gospel. First of all, you read a passage. So I like to go to Romans 5.8 at this point. So in Romans 5.8, the Bible says this, but God commendeth his love toward us 
in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I'll say, I'm sure you've heard the story of Jesus Christ, and most people have. I'll say, you, you know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and most people agree with that. And I'll say, let me show you this verse. This is the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3.16. And I'll turn to John 3.16. And I'll say, look, the Bible says this, For God so loved the world, that's you and I, that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever, that means anybody, believeth, and I'll, and I'll usually at this point, I'll say, I want you to notice how that word keeps coming up. Faith, believe. Believeth on him, that's Jesus, should not perish, that means they won't go to hell, but have everlasting life. And I'll explain, uh, you know, the gospel at this time. Just tell them about Jesus, uh, you know. Tell them about the fact that he died on the cross. And take your time here, you know, to really, to explain, you know. And, and you know, when I say take your time, I'm not saying take 20 minutes to just explain this. But I'm saying... Ask them questions. Make sure, you know, at this point is where I usually ask, you know, have you heard of Jesus Christ? You know, oh yeah, I've heard of Jesus Christ. Did you know that the Bible says that he was God in the flesh, you know? Uh, and most people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I knew that. You know, sometimes people say, no, I didn't, I don't know that. So maybe at this point you want to take another, uh, uh, you know, show them another verse. Well, let me show you. The Bible says that Jesus was God in the flesh, you know, or um, whatever. If you look at page number 17, um, I, I, there's, a, there's a, a notes there saying explain the gospel even further if needed. This isn't part of the presentation, but if needed, here are some references for you to kind of help you out. Let's say you need to explain that the Bible says that Jesus died for our sins. You can you'll go to Colossians 1.14. Let's say that he was born of a virgin. You go to Matthew 23 through 20, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verses 23 to 25. Let's say that he, uh, you need to explain that he was God in the flesh. You can go to Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Let's say that you need to explain that he did not deserve to die because Jesus has never sinned. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 to 21. Let's say uh, you need to explain that he died to pay for our sins. 1 John 3, 5. Let's say you need to explain that Jesus went to hell for three days and three nights. Acts 2, 31. Now, please understand, I'm not telling you to go to all these references. I'm just saying, if you're talking to someone at this point and they're like, I didn't know Jesus was God. You know, at this point you want to explain that to them. Maybe have some references. You know, I, something you can do, you know, you, you ladies, uh, I'll, I'll say this to the ladies because the men, I'm not going to appreciate you doing this. But you ladies, if you need some references, you know, my wife, and there's been ladies in our church that have gone to my wife and just asked her, can I copy down all the references at the, uh, you know, end of your Bible? And, you know, I've got some references here at the end of my Bible. And, uh, you know, it, it'd be good to just kind of have some verses where you can go. So you're like, if I need to prove the deity of Christ, I know what verses to go to. So, you know, if you, if you guys, if you want something, you know, you can come copy them off me. You ladies, if you, if you want to take some verses, there's been a lot of ladies that have gained to my wife and just copied copied her verses, you know, and just had them there to kind of have references. So I'm not saying go to these, but I'm saying have them ready to kind of explain these things at this point, all right? Uh, number three, review the concept. You know, at this point, you're just asking, do you believe that Jesus died, was buried, and spent three days, three nights in hell, that he was God in the flesh? You know, do you believe these things? Do you believe in the gospel? Do you believe in, in Jesus Christ? Letter B, let's review the importance of the gospel. Number one, the gospel is the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number two, the gospel is how we were redeemed. The gospel is how we were redeemed. That means purchased or ransomed from our sins. Number three, salvation only comes through the preaching and understanding of the gospel. Salvation only comes through the preaching and understanding of the gospel. Number four, the message of the gospel truly is good tidings, good news for mankind. That is uh, the message of the gospel. So I want you to understand, up to this point, and I know I'm reviewing a lot, but I want, I want to try to sink it down in your head as much as I can. Up to this point, we showed them what? There's none righteous. No one's perfect. Up to this point, we showed them we're all sinners, for all have sinned. Up to this point, we showed them there are wages for our sin, which is death. Not just the physical death, the second death, being cast into the lake of fire. Up to this point, we've shown him every single person is condemned to hell because of their sins, because every single person is at the very least a liar. All right, right? We can all agree on that. And we showed them God has a gift he wants to give you. That gift is eternal life. It's through Jesus Christ. You don't earn the gift. You don't work for the gift. You don't pay for the gift. The gift was paid for. And sometimes you can explain, you know, you can even explain this verse. I like to use the illustration of the gift the entire time. You know, I just keep going back to that illustration. And I'll say, you know, let, let's say, you know, let, let me go back to that illustration about the gift. Let's say it's your birthday. I'm going to give you a gift. I'm the giver and you're the receiver. Who pays for the gift? And just let them answer. Well, you do. And I say, exactly. You know, 
the gift cost me something. Now, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free to you, right? Because as soon as you have to pay for it or do something for it, then it's no longer a gift. But it cost me something. I had to purchase this pen so that I could give it to you freely in the same way. Now, that's the key word. In the same way. I'm applying the, the, uh, the illustration. In the same way, Jesus had to purchase our salvation so he could give it to us freely. And then just, you can hammer down on everything you've been talking about. So does that mean that I pay for my salvation by going to church? Does that mean that I pay for my salvation by getting baptized? Does that mean that I pay for my salvation by living a good life? No. He paid for it on the cross. He paid for it, and he gives it to me freely. So, uh, for those of you that are taking notes, Romans 6.23, if you want to go back to Romans 6.23, uh, write a number 7 in front of Romans 6.23. Now, here's the thing with Romans 6.23, okay? You already have a number in front of Romans 6.23, right? So you, wanna, you need to just figure out how you're going to do this and not confuse yourself. Realize that you're going to go to Romans 6.23 at one point, and then you're going to go leave it, and then you're going to come back to Romans 6.23 the second time. So number seven, because it's now it's the second time you're coming, Romans 6.23, in front of Romans 6.23b. Maybe you want to write the first, what, what's that first number? I don't have it in front of me. Was it three? Maybe you want to write the three at the beginning of the verse and write the seven in the middle of the verse. I don't know, however you want to do it, but just to not confuse yourself. Number seven, Romans 6.23b. Next to or somewhere by that, write Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Now again, however you need to do this to forget, to, to not forget, if you need to write an A for the first reference you're going to go to after the first time you're there and a B for the second reference Ephesians 2 89 after the second time however that works for you I'm not trying to confuse you and maybe just even mentioning it is confusing you but um, just you know try to remember that you're you already been there all right so Ephesians 2 8 and 9 so you got a number 7 in front of Romans 6 23 B somewhere near that you write Ephesians 2 8 and 9 because that's the next verse you're gonna go to then go to Ephesians 2 8 and 9 and write a number 8 in front of Ephesians 2 8 and 9 Ephesians 2 8 and 9 write a number 8 and next to Ephesians 2 and 9, you can write Romans 5.8, because that's the next verse you're going to go to, Romans 5.8. And then go to Romans 5.8 and write a number 9 in front of Romans 5.8. And next to Romans 5.8, write John 3.16, because that's the verse you're going to go to after that, if you're following this outline. So number 7, in front of Romans 6.23, Ephesians 2 and 9 is the next reference. A number 8, in front of Ephesians 2 and 9, Romans 5.8 is the next reference. A number 9... Before Romans 5, 8, John 3, 16 is the next reference. So at, that, at this point, we have basically explained to them the gospel of Jesus Christ.